Okay, so this is the Wednesday evening, March 20th, 2024, Shootsbury Cemetery Commissioner's meeting. Um, and we can call it to order at 606. Had a little bit of technical difficulties to start with, but we're up and running now. Um, just for the record, in attendance is myself, Walter Tibbetts, Susan Millinger, and a member of the uh, cemetery committee, and a prospective new groundskeeper, Carl Lounder, right? Last yes. name? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Very yeah. good. Um, so we just got two items to take care of, and then we're, we're getting right into the, the groundskeeper section. So we'll, if you Give us just a couple minutes. Yeah, no we'll, problem. We'll deal with business first, the yeah. other business first. So um, first thing on the agenda is review and approve minutes of the February 28th, 2024 meeting. And what I saw of those, I thought they were right spot on and I didn't see any changes or corrections, except for you had a question on what time the meeting was adjourned. I see that. Um, yes, I could probably go back and look at the the recording, but I did not do that yet. Sorry. You know, Walter, I tried to look at the recording and I didn't have permission to look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's, I still got to, what I got to do is I got to get those to Grace so she can put them up, I guess, on, they put all those meetings up on the YouTube thing now. Um, I've got to get. I got to sit down with her and figure out how to do all that and send that, send all that stuff to her. So okay. sorry about that. All right. Nope. So um, I guess we could, I don't know if we can approve the minutes with the exception of finalizing the end time of the meeting. I would think we could. Okay. Well, so I'll make, I'll make that. Say it was seven. What was that? I said we could fake it and say it was seven. Yeah, it was somewhere around there. I don't know exactly when, but but yeah. we'll, to to be official, we will. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as printed and distributed with the just the future correction of the actual adjournment time. Gotcha. And if you'll second that, I second the motion. Okay. Any other further discussion, corrections, omissions, errors? Um, I will once again say it's nice having the uh, the different tasks highlighted. It makes it easier to pick things out and get things done. So, um, all right. Um, hearing no other corrections to that, um, we'll do a roll call vote. So I will vote yes. And I will, Millinger, I will vote yes also. Okay. So motion passes. All right. Um Next thing on the agenda is just new burials and lot sales. Um, we haven't done anything in the past part of the month, but we do have an upcoming burial on Friday. Okay. So there will be a summit, uh, a funeral there on Friday morning. So. And well, I believe we decided that we would include in the minutes the names of those buried, although yes. not yeah. those names buying lots. Right, so the the name this would be um, Joanna Hayes. Oh my word! Yeah, you didn't hear. I didn't. Um, Friday, um, she passed away very suddenly. Um, oh my. Basically, just had walked in the door. Um, you know, family members had seen her walk in. She was in there for a little while. Another family member came in and found her dead on the floor. She made it just into the kitchen. So. Wow. Well, that's not a bad way for Joanna to go. No, it was very, apparently very, very quick. So she had a good long life. Yep. 91 years. Wow. Yep. So, so her, her actual services are tomorrow after tomorrow evening, four to seven for the calling hours. And then I think, I'm not sure what time the funeral starts, but I think it's 10 at Douglas funeral home in Amherst. Okay. She was there. They were there with her husband, Douglas Newman. Yep. Yeah. So. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome. Sorry to break the news like that to you, but things happen. Yeah. All right. And that's all we had. No other sales or anything or other burials. 
So moving on to agenda item number three is the hiring of new groundskeepers update. Um, and we've made some fabulous headway in the last couple of days. Um, matter of fact, uh, it was back at the fire department pancake breakfast. Um, Melissa Makepeace says, you know, I've got a friend that's really interested in, in the groundskeeping. And she introduced me to Carl and we talked a little bit then and then yesterday at 4 30 we met at the cemetery um and in prior to that he did send in his resume which you've read mm -hmm. um excellent yeah, resume. yeah. um and then um, we met yesterday and went through the equipment the grounds walked the grounds did everything and uh after doing that he was still interested in it so right um yeah. uh I, what i figured you know we haven't really talked about lately of how we go about hiring people but you know the basic thing is i guess we just have to vote on whether we want them to uh want to want to employ them or not here at our meeting then it's filling out the you know the paf the personal action form and doing the the regular standard stuff we have to do for that which would be um, you know, that gets voted on by the personnel board and then the select board. And once they've signed it, he's covered and good to go. And we got the financial stuff to do, but that's, you know, neither here nor there about hiring that's afterwards. So, um, okay. Carl, would you like to say anything before we get into doing anything else with that? Um, just, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, being a part of uh, a bigger part of the community um, and being a part of the town. So I moved here a couple of years ago, so I've been looking to get involved um, in some capacity uh, with the town. So I look forward to this and it's a good opportunity and it's right up my alley. Actually, I've been looking for something, you know, kind of part time and, um, you know, I love the outdoors and I love landscaping and this is you know i would classify this as kind of gardening but um <laughs> you know it's a nice it's a nice outlet for me as well so i'm stuck in an office all week so this is kind of a uh a, a nice outlet for me so thank you yeah yeah and um he, carl definitely has a strong knowledge in in the equipment um how to operate it maintenance of it um you know, probably even far above me, proper procedures for doing the mowing and weed whacking. And, you know, he asked a lot of good questions about different things. Well, is this going to be part of my job or not? Um, I was like, well, you know, if we get to it and, you know, you feel you want to do it, you know, that'd be great. Like, you know, when cornerstones get knocked over or something like that, it was always kind of left before. Um, he said, well, you know, if you want, I can, I can do that. And, you know, yeah, just take the shovel and reset it, put it down to the ground level, fill it back in. Yeah, we're good to go. So um I think we're uh in in hiring Carl we're getting a a, a very strong, you know, self-motivated, responsible party that has a lot of a lot of knowledge and is gonna give a lot of care to the job. Um mm -hmm. and you know nothing to take away from from susan and mike they did an excellent job at at the, the mowing and weed whacking in in general care of the cemetery but he brings a little bit more in knowledge of maintenance and and care of the equipment and stuff like that so um that's we're, good. De we're definitely well, not stepping down it'll be a little bit of relief for you to not yep. have to be the final decider on maintenance of machinery right yep that'll be good. okay um I think just in all fairness, um, and I did tell Carl this too, I think we're still, we'll proceed with advertising for the job to, you know, just get possibly somebody else as a backup or to help him out, especially when things get, you know, really crazy in the springtime or whatever, and to help out with the other cemeteries. So um, I don't know if you saw Susan, but I did rewrite the posting for the job description. I saw it. Yeah. And it and, said that we would hire when we, as, as soon as we found the right person. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we can, I think we'll still do that so we can have, 
have a, a backup, but um, my general opinion after meeting with Carl yesterday is I can't wait to hire him. <laughs> so um, do you have any questions, Susan, for, for Carl? No, I don't have any questions. Um, Carl, well, just a small question. Carl, I've forgotten from your resume. Have you ever worked on cemeteries before? On cemeteries? No, I have not worked in cemeteries okay. before. Uh, we did talk about the you know, the little intricacies of working around the historic headstones and and things like that and ways to you know look at for doing the weed whacking to minimize doing any damage to the stones and all that and you know he, he got a good good grasp of of doing all that and we you know we walked a, a good section of the cemetery just to kind of look and see where things are, you know, where to put branches after they've been, you know, falling down branches and ask, you even ask him about, well, these groups of trees here with all the leaves stuck in them, do you want those all fully cleaned out or, or not? You know, so he already started looking at the details of the job and, you know, what should and shouldn't be done. So um, I, I have a good feeling that, you know, he will be, as I get said, responsible, self-motivated, not afraid to ask questions if he's unsure. Um, we already went through the process of getting the gasoline and or some of that. Um, so we left some of the finer details to we actually hired him. But um, I will say this, I was confident enough that before he left, I gave him a key to the Hearst house. So. Nope. I guess I was thinking, and you'll have to adjust to this. Uh, the people leave chalkies around the gravestones, and we had some problems. Yeah, we we discussed that already too. And the, <laughs> you know, what's what's in the in the uh, um, regulations describing that now? So yeah, yeah. yeah but, um, any other uh, any last minute questions you have, Carl? A boss, uh, before we uh, Shanghai you into this position. Uh, no, no, no other last questions. Just again, thank you for the opportunity. And, you know, um, I did want to just add, you know, even though I haven't worked in a cemetery, I do understand the, um, I do understand the sensitivity and the situational awareness of, of the property. Um, you know, it's not a property that you could just go in and, you know, uh, you know, go full bore and not have any, you know, um, consideration or thoughtfulness of what you're actually working around in the property, the, the type of the property that's there. So there is an element of, you know, being cautious and respectful to, you know, the property and, and all of that. So I, I do fully understand that, even though I haven't worked in the cemetery before. So, yeah, good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, any other discussion? Okay. So at this point, I will. Seeing there's two of us, I, I usually not like not right to have the chairman make the motions, but in this case, I'm still going to. Um, I will make a motion that we hire Carl Lounder for the position of cemetery groundskeeper. Uh, I second the motion. All right. Um, any more further discussion? Probably not. Okay, so we'll do it a roll call vote. So Susan Milner? Aye. And Walter Tibbetts? Aye. Very good. Carl? You okay. started the first, you gone through the first hurdle. All right. Well, thank you very so much. So what we'll do is uh, I'll make up uh, the, the personnel action form. And if there's any information on there that I don't have um, from you, I'll just text you or give you a call and get that and we'll get that paperwork going okay um because i think the personnel committee meets possibly even next week so if we can get that in and get them to sign it that that speeds things up tremendously okay great very good and you're welcome to sit in the rest of the meeting if you'd like or if you got other things to do you're more than welcome to go too um i'll sit in yeah sure okay all right very good um well so Oh. Was that Susan? I said welcome to Carl. Oh, right, yeah, thank welcome. You. Thank you. Good to have you on board. Here um, is. Let's see. Was there anything else on Groundskeeper? No, I, I did let Becky know that I rewrote the, the posting for the job. And I and once we 
you know, if we feel that you're happy with what I put in there, Susan, for, you know, updating that, I'll get that to her and we'll uh, get that out, whether we get any response from it or not. Um, and like I told Carl, you know, he's already on board first. So um, if anything, we get people, you know, if there's a question of who is hierarchy or not, well, he is senior because he's been here longer than them. So mm -hmm. if we hire somebody tomorrow, you're still on a day, day sooner than they are. So. Right, right. We'll see how that works out. I mean, we've had two people doing it, but they were a couple, so they worked together. Uh, we've never had two people that didn't, you know, that weren't like that, a couple to work there. So we'll see how that works. You know, if it means just having somebody to do some of the other cemeteries or whatever, you know, we'll we'll make we'll make it all work and keep everybody happy. Yeah. And like I said, you know, come some of these bigger projects at the, at the beginning. As I have time, I'll be willing to help you out too and right. you know, get you up to speed on things. And there's a few things that probably go easier with two people. And so we'll okay. we'll work it out. Yeah. Well, it'll work out. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> All right. So I guess there's nothing else right at the moment on groundskeepers, but it is a load off our minds to have somebody here that's qualified and willing to do the job. So yep. Uh, so moving on then, um, update on ground penetrating radar and mapping project. Um, I did just hear back from Bob Perry. Ah. Uh, I sent him an email earlier in the week and he got back to me, said, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I've been busy. I kind of, you know, put it on the back shelf. I'll get you something by the end of the week. And he actually sent something tonight uh, or this late this afternoon um well yeah about 140 139 he sent it back um so he did and i asked him to break the proposal up into three different projects he had one he had remembered doing the the ground penetrating radar in you know what we call the south section of the west cemetery in the areas that were marked unknowns and then the mapping of the south section and i said well we had kind of also talked about the older section the north section um so he did a price for that also and the prices are as follows for project one which he called project one it was the dedicated ground penetrating radar service um that would be one day south section of the unmarked plus travel time five hours round trip uh, the total for that project would be $2,325. Okay. Um, he then put project two as the old north section and then project three as the south section. So we'll, I'll just, I'll read project three first because that's the same section as what we're going to have the ground penetrating radar done in. Um, that was, um, Southwest section 2.32 acres. He figures that's going to take two days. Um, then the, the drafting of the map, that'd be 35 hours at $95 an hour His travel time, round trip and overnight accommodations that came to a total of $7,250. So that's the, that's the biggest part you of the know, project. But I remember him saying that he wouldn't be staying overnight because he lived so close. And I also thought he might not be charging us travel time because he lived so close. Yeah. Jim, um, there was something of that, this, which, and, you know, he was talking a bit in circles. So that's why I want to get something in writing from him to see for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. And then project two, which would be the mapping service of the old north section. So the old north section, 1.24 acres, one day, may require a second half day to complete the work. Uh, map drafting, 20 hours at $95 an hour. Travel time, five hours round trip. Um, and overnight accommodations, if a second day is required, that was a total of $4,175. So 
So we're somewhere in the range of just under $14,000 to have him do all of that work. So would we ask him to start with one and three and wait on two, possibly, depending on Could. whether we the money available. Yeah, or you know, we'll have to we have to decide which ones we want to go through and which ones we have the money for. Um I you know definitely the ground penetrating radar, two thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars spent is yeah. is a great deal considering a, we have the perspective of if that clears those sections of about forty thousand dollars, forty thousand six hundred dollars in lot sales, so that's a great investment. Two thousand dollars or twenty three hundred dollars for up to forty thousand dollars return. Yep. Um, that's that's one's a no brainer. Yep. Um, it would just be which which priority do we want to give the the actual south section of the you know the cemetery as being mapped or the north section as being mapped um or if we can get money i mean ideally i'd like to see both of them done because we have absolutely no maps of the north section there's nothing anywhere that i've known of or seen um in the south section we know the maps are kind of incorrect so it would be kind of nice to have that mm -hmm. you know at least know what what's actually there and how far off it is and this would be the best way to do that i think so yeah because i if, i don't think i mean we spent three thousand three hundred just for the surveyors the first time and just to kind of tell us well this is the way the roads are supposed to be and that was just the roads themselves that was you know nothing else to do a full mapping of everything there i'm sure would, would be far more than what he's charging us and he's giving a much more detailed I mean, he sounds like when he was talking, he's going to detail where every headstone is, where every landmark is, everything. So I think it would be very helpful to have it's just a question of whether we can have find come up with the money. Right. And would want to do it on two stages if we can't manage the money for do it all at once. Right. Yeah. If I recall, our expendable trust fund is I think around eleven or twelve thousand dollars. I I didn't look at the la last um, expense report that has that in there, but um, you know all of this goes a little over what that would be, and we don't want to totally drain that away. But if we can look and see if there's other sources of funding that we might be able to use for this, um, do you remember the the um the money that the Friends of the Historical Society gave us? Historical yep, that's that was three thousand dollars right there, I believe. Of course, they were designating it for historical work, so we could um, maybe the north section. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, that's four thousand. Yeah, yeah, we could we could put it to that, and we can kick in a little bit to get that done too, and. Uh, yeah, if we could do like maybe project one and project two together, um, that would be the the ground penetrating radar and then mapping of the old north section, um, mm -hmm. and and then see what we can come up with for the for the south section. Yeah, maybe by that time we could go back to um, the committee that we got the gravestone money from. Got yeah, the CPA, yeah. It would fall under their headings. Yeah, and the, you know, there, like I said, there may be some other other possible funding sources, uh, even donations. So, yeah. Um, and then he did say at the end, the five hundred dollar charge for the town hall meeting would be applied to the mapping services only. So, either one of the ones that we do mapping, so there'd be a the five hundred dollars that we already paid for the uh, the meeting would go towards some of the mapping and the mapping. Okay. The mapping on the old north section was uh, 1900 so that would drop it by $500 there. So Yeah. All right. Um, so I think what we do have to do is get... Uh, so one thing I didn't really do before the meeting was look at what we have for funding available for the rest of this year and, and into next year to... Uh, try to pay for some of this stuff or how we, we pay for it. I mean, I'd love to see all of it done really mm -hmm. well because 
you know, the, the map that we have for the, the south section is so far off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ridiculous. And we don't have anything for the north, so that would be nice to have. And I believe he said once we did that and he gave us the digital maps, we'll be able to add things in, like, you know, on a headstone, be able to add information on what that lot is and all. Do you re don't you recall something like that? I do. Yeah. I do that, yeah. So that would be nice. So it's almost like a uh, information management system. Yeah. Once we get the maps, whether we have to buy software to do that or not, or I'm not sure, but it's, it seemed like it was very doable. Yeah. So I would like to get Dina's input on this. Yes. So uh, do you feel that, that the, there's a need to get back in touch with Bob soon? Um. He, the only thing he said was, you know, uh, let me know if you would like to schedule any of these services. I, it, you know, when he had his, we had his first meeting with him, he seemed like he was uh, pretty busy and swamped for the year. And he had a couple, you know, areas to carve out some time. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to wait too long, but I think we can wait for another, you know, till next month's meeting and and really discuss this and have some financial numbers together so we okay. can make a decision then, and then we can call him and let him know for sure. Maybe we could drop him a note and tell him that. Yeah. Okay. We I need our. Member. What was that? Sorry. We need our missing member. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So at least it, at least it's moving along. Yes. Well, that's great. I'm glad it got back to us. Thanks for doing that, Walter. Yeah. No problem. It was actually a kind of a productive week for the cemetery this week for me. <laughs> Good. All right. So next thing on the agenda was the letter to the state legislators supporting bills, House Bill 2193 and Senate Bill 1339. And that was, you were going to take care of that. Okay. I have not done it yet, but I have found out some interesting information. Okay. Okay. Uh, both of these bills have been put into what is basically an omnibus bill at the, for, of public health issues. Okay. And I don't really know, um, you know, and they're at, uh, uh, they seem to be at the, at the Senate Committee on Rules. And I'm not really sure what the what the best way to proceed in this way is. So mm -hmm. I thought Natalie Blaze is the sponsor, is the creator, co-sponsor of one of these bills. Um, and I thought I would write Natalie and say, the Cemetery Commission really supports this. What can we do to, to show our support in the legislature? Okay. And other, the other bill, um, I didn't know, there was a same, same thing as Natalie uh, proposed, which is adding other and if, uh, environmentally friendly methods of disposal of bodies. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to cremation, there's the exact same bill was um, put forward by one and one of the people involved was our former representative, Oliveira. Mm -hmm. And I I would contact him and say the same thing. Sure. I feel we we know him and he's um, would be responsive to Shootsbury. OK, so that's my plan for for the coming week or two. OK, very good. To see what the next best step is. Right. All right. Very good. Thank you for the update on that. Mm -hmm. um, next on the agenda is the Gravestone Restoration Project. Um, I had a a really good conversation with Tamara. Um, I think it was yesterday. Um, she was happened to be out in Ohio at the time, doing a, oh. a putting on a cor a couple courses out there. Um, she was going to be heading back this way soon. Um, she said, I've been, you know, been meaning to call you guys and let you know what's going on. Um, but she has a large project, I guess, going on in Worcester starting April 1st. So in basically two weeks. Mm -hmm. And she already told them that I'll work Monday through Friday there. I'm leaving Saturdays and Sundays for some of my local projects or people I've been doing a lot of work for. So she said that was between us and Belchertown. Uh, oh. And she's been waiting kind of for the weather to get warm enough to start doing some mortar work. You know, it has to be over a certain temperature overnight. 
Otherwise, she can't really do it. But then she did say, well, you know, I could start setting some bases and all that in the meantime. And then once it gets warm enough, then she could, you know, start doing some of the mortaring. So she feels sometime in the beginning of April or beginning to middle of April, she could probably start doing some of the some of the work. Oh, great. Yeah. So it's, it's, again, with all of it, it's dependent on weather and temperature. Yeah. But, yep. you know, she definitely had us in mind. Good. Um, so, you know, she's been just been kind of waiting for the weather to get, get to the point that she can start working. So, but that would be good. She can, you know, get going on that and then we can wrap that one up. Good. That's great. Thanks, Walter. So we should, she said when she gets back in the area and gets going, she'll give us a call and let us know when she's going to start, start working there. So okay. we know, and then everybody else knows. And cause she said like, she's, she's had instances where like she's taken some, some dirt or sod out and wrapped it in tarps to keep it, you know, one, keep it from drying out and freezing too much and all that. And, you know, be lying next to some headstones in the cemetery and, People go by and then call the police and said, I think somebody left a body in the cemetery. <laughs> so she wants to let us know when she's going to be working there and that, you know, we can also let the police know that she'll be doing some work there. And so everybody's aware of everything that's going on. So, Carl, this is definitely necessary for you to know. Yeah. Walter told you about the project. Well, I, I told him that we had had some work done before and showed him some of the stones and that we were going to be having some more work done. I think it's a total of, well, this year, what, about 22 stones and the next project would be another 22. Something yeah, like I'm, that. I'm in the 20. This is well, one meeting for that stuff. All right. Um, it seems like there was something else I wanted to bring up under unfinished or what's uh... anything oh, okay. to do with a cemetery? What was that anything to do with JCA's search for a cemetery and that letter that you had to write? Um. <laughs> Homeowner? Well, I haven't heard anything more. I, I mean, I got I got some emails from, from some concerned citizens that were under the misunderstanding that we, the town, was looking to put in a cemetery on property over on West Pelham Road. And the people were a little concerned of, you know, chemicals and runoff and and just clear cutting the area and, and all that. And I wrote back to them to let her know that in fact, it was not the Shootsbury Cemetery Commission that was looking to do that. We have plenty of capacity in our cemetery for a long period of time. And that it was most likely the, the JCA, the Jewish community of Amherst that was looking to do another cemetery. And, you know, if they had some concerns, they should probably contact them or, you know, the town, whether it's the planning board or the board of health or whoever. Um, but it was in no way anything that the Shootsbury Cemetery Commission was looking at doing. And therefore, we had no jurisdiction over it. Yeah, you she, wrote, was happy, she was happy with that. So. Yeah, a good letter that you wrote her. Oh, thank you. Um, the only thing I, I did have that probably come under unfinished business and I forgot to do this yesterday but I will get back to him is I did not get a hold of Doc Prune and talk to him about the ground penetrating radar project and I think I'll also talk to him at the same time about you know the the headstone restoration project and maybe he can come in and do a you know a little article and some pictures there and get that some some interest and also you know get some tomorrow some more coverage too yes and he might very well be interested in interviewing both tamara and bob perry yeah when, yeah yep so i will i will try to contact him later this week and if not next week and keep that going 
Um, because he did, he did seem pretty interested in it. So, and I never, I did not get back to him, and I got to apologize to him for that. But. You had a long list of things to do, and more, <laughs> most of my priority than a newspaper article. Right, but it's also get good, you know, to get PR for a lot of the work that we do here, and a lot of people don't recognize how much work the, the cemetery commission is actually doing at times. So, I know they ask me, "What do you do?" Yeah, <laughs> eh, nothing. <laughs> Well, sit in on the meeting. We'll find out. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. The last thing I had on here as a item was the brush cutting and tree work at the cemetery. Um, I have not talked to Steve recently. I mean, he said once things dried up and got a little bit warmer, they would, as they had time, they would go through and start doing some of that. So, um We'll just kind of wait and see. I know they've been doing a lot of work over at the library lot, getting that set because I guess it looks like they're putting in a well there. So they had to clear, clear some, some space for them to get in and do that. So hopefully as it dries out a little bit and warms up, they'll get in there and start doing some of that. And I, I did talk with Carl about those projects that we want to do and some that they're going to be doing and, you know, some that we can do also. So, um, Hopefully there'll be more on that coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And then I have nothing else for items not in, anticipated for you as prior to the meeting, unless you have something or something's come up. I don't believe so. Okay. So in that case, um, we just need to set a date for the next meeting. And Carl, um, in the future, this is one thing we wrote into the job description. Uh, I think that you might have seen in there if you read it through is that, you know, not every month, but occasionally we'd like to have the groundskeeper sit in at least for a little bit on our meetings just to give us an update on what, you know, what you see going on or if there's some problems or anything like that. You know, this way everybody kind of knows about it. And, you know, if you have any questions, we can ask. You know, and then, like I said, there's always if it's a really important things, you know, I'm a phone call away or any of us are a phone call away. We'll get you all that contact information for all three members. Um, but this is a good time to come and say, hey, you know, I've, I've been doing this and I realize, you know, we might need this piece of equipment or, or something like that might be useful. This would be a good place to to bring that and we can discuss it and and all that. Okay. So and so you, so we get an idea of what's going on there and you get an idea of what we're doing, too. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Great. Very good. So we usually meet on the third Monday of the, the third Wednesday of the month. Excuse me. So that would put us at calendar here. April 17th. Okay. Yes. Is that okay for you, Susan? It is. I'll be away the next Wednesday, so I'm glad it's the 17th. Okay. Very good. So April 17th at 6 o'clock. Hopefully Zoom won't cancel my meeting on, on its website. I I could not figure that out. I went to open up the meeting. It says, you have no meeting scheduled. I said, okay. of course I scheduled one. I even copied it and put it into the town, you know, into the town calendar so I tried getting in that way and I didn't know if it would let me and say, well, the host doesn't open yet, but it did show me as the host. I was like, okay, that's good. And then I saw popped up, you know, select board uh, or members and something like that. I said, hmm, okay, maybe that's not right. Maybe that's, maybe I'm in the wrong meeting. So I closed it out and I was trying to call you, Susan, at the same time. And I think you answered it as you were trying to dial in so I could hear you talk and I tried talking to you and you couldn't hear me oh yeah wow and Oops. then then I tried getting in again when you that's when you called and I saw you pop up on the meeting like, oh okay it must be the right one then somehow but it was really weird that in you know our account on zoom it said we had no meeting scheduled you know that happened to me once Walter and I yeah. had to go someplace else on the page to and mess so you mess around maybe you click on home but okay click, yeah i tried yeah. that and it didn't, didn't seem to bring me there but I'll, I'll i'll play around with it and see yeah yeah all right Zoom's tricky. yep <laughs> 
Okay, very good. Um, so if there's nothing more, we'll uh, I'll accept the motion for adjournment. Uh, so moved. I move we adjourn. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so the meeting adjourned I have at 6.45. Yes, I got this time. No problem. All right. And uh, Carl, thank you for coming, and uh, congratulations, and we'll be in touch with you as, as things move along here. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have nice to meet you, Carl. Nice Look to meet forward. you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. There we go.